Greetings from Dr. Peter McLuhan, your host for another adventure in the life Jesus modeled. Our topic today is healing the sick. Last week, we considered the question, what kind of disciples do we want to make? We noted that the answer varies widely depending on the views of the person that you are talking to. However, if we ask Jesus the question, we would receive a very clear answer. Jesus wants all of his disciples to walk in the same power and authority that he gave to the apostles. Matthew makes it very clear in Matthew chapter 10 and verse 7. As you go, preach, saying, the kingdom of heaven is at hand, heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the lepers, cast out demons, freely you have received and freely give. Disciples are people walking in power and authority, carrying five clear mandates that Jesus gave to every believer. Disciples are not people who know a lot about Jesus and the Bible. Disciples are followers of Jesus who can do what Jesus did. Jesus gave us five clear mandates to follow. Preach the kingdom, heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the leper, cast out demons. And so last week we asked the question, what is kingdom preaching? And the man of Gadara is an example to us of what it means to carry the kingdom message. Without any formal training, Jesus gave him this instruction, Luke chapter 8 and verse 39. Return to your home and declare how much God has done for you. And he went away proclaiming throughout the whole city how much Jesus had done for him. Preaching is sharing your experience with what God has done for you. It does not require a platform or a title. Kingdom preachers focus on what Jesus has done for them. And your encounter with Jesus is enough to draw people to him. Today we're going to focus on the second mandate. Jesus said we are to heal the sick. Jesus did not ask us to pray for the sick. He commanded us to heal the sick. We have delegated authority to command disease to go. A say to diseases what Jesus said to diseases. At first, you will most likely feel uncomfortable speaking directly to diseases. But over time, you'll become more comfortable doing what Jesus invited us to do. Taking authority over disease by speaking to them just like Jesus did. This is what he modeled for the apostles to do. It is what he modeled for us to do. You might feel like it's not your right to speak directly to a disease, but Jesus will not feel that way about you. He will, in fact, take delight in you, that you're exercising faith, that he is willing to heal through you. One night I heard the audible voice of Jesus say to me, I am willing to heal through you. It was a very powerful experience. Today I'll share with you a simple five-step process I have learned to follow when healing the sick. If you will follow this model, you will find it easier to heal than you have ever imagined. Here are some simple questions to ask. What is the healing need? What is the heart of the matter? How do we direct our words? What is being experienced? And how do we walk in healing? All of these steps, will, you'll go through them in just a couple of seconds, even though it will take me a little bit longer to explain it to you. The first step is to learn the basic details of what happened to the person who was requesting healing. And here are some questions that will help you explore that. What is the healing need? How did it happen? How long have you had this problem? What have doctors said about your condition? Was there any trauma connected with this illness or this disease or with whatever the condition is that we are praying for? <clears throat> As you ask these questions, here are some helpful suggestions. 
avoid taking a complete medical history. Learn just enough to know what the problem is. Details undermine an atmosphere of faith. As you are listening, practice listening to the Holy Spirit as the same time that you are listening to the person's ministry need. Holy Spirit will help you uncover aspects of healing that are more than physical. And this brings us to the second step. What is the heart of the matter? Is it a natural cause? Does it have an emotional root? Have there been any violations of God's law? Uh, Jesus frequently healed people with what he described as having an afflicting spirit. Uh, there are diseases connected with an evil spirit. And here are some tips on how to know if the person's disease is being complicated by an afflicting spirit. If the pain gets worse, if the pain moves around, if the pain comes back a few days later, all of these could be an indication of an afflicting spirit. If this is the case, break the power of the afflicting spirit as you release healing. Uh, next, we'll want to ask the Holy Spirit uh, how to speak to diseases. And these include words uh, that we would say to Father God. Invite the healing presence of the Lord into the moment as you are praying for someone. Uh, then there are words spoken to the condition. Command the pain to go. Command cancer to leave. Command tumors to shrink. And then there are words that God will give you to say. And when you receive a word like that, it might not make any sense to you, but say exactly what he tells you to say. Even though it doesn't make sense, it will most likely make sense to the person over whom you are saying it. If you release these words, uh, here are, as you release these words, here are some recommendations we would like to follow. <clears throat> so to the person who is seeking healing, we encourage you to close your eyes, open your hands, don't pray with me, just listen. I, I don't need you to agree with me in prayer. Uh, just be in a receiving mode. But do let us know if you feel any sensations. Now, typical sensations that people experience in healing include heat, a mild electrical tingling, a deep calm or a cool breeze. These are the most common things that are reported to me by people as I release words of healing. Uh, in the case of the lady who touched the fringe of Jesus' garment, this is what Mark says in chapter 5 and verse 29. Immediately the flow of blood dried up and she felt in her body that she was healed of her disease. In other words, she had a sensation that caused her to know immediately that there was a change in her body. Uh, sometimes these sensations cause us to know that God is actively working in that for which we have asked him to pray. Uh, now here are some helpful tips as you declare words of healing. Speak short, directed words of healing. Headache, go. It doesn't need to be any more complicated than that. Encourage you to keep your eyes open as you pray for people. Watch for twitching, for facial expressions, for sweating or for muscle movement. All of these are indications of what might be going on in a person's life. Now next we want to discover what the person is experiencing. And so we want to ask the question, are you feeling better? And many times people... Uh, are afraid to say whether they feel better or not and usually say, yes, I feel better. But this is a moment to encourage honesty. And I'll say to a person, this is not my healing, this is yours. This is not a time for faith statements. This is not a time to say, well, I believe tomorrow I'll feel better or next week I'll feel better. We want to encourage people to actually put a number on their progress. On a scale of 1 to 10, how much better do you feel? In fact, it's great if you can ask a person at the beginning of your time together, just put a number on your pain on a scale of 1 through 10. Doctors do that all the time in hospitals to give some kind of subjective idea of the amount of pain a person is in. And so ask that question. And then when pain begins to go down, no matter how small the improvement is, uh, give thanks to the Lord. If pain goes from a from a 9 to a 7, that's a great thing to celebrate 
and then keep speaking healing over a person's life. Ask the person if you can pray again. And people say, well, how long do you pray? Well, you can pray until the person is healed or until there does not seem to be any further improvement. And then, then we want to test healing. And the way we do this is we ask a person to do what she or, she or he could not do beforehand. If it's a case of a muscle or a knee or a joint, ask a person to, uh, to, uh, to stretch their arms out, to move their hands, to move their feet, to stretch their knees. And some people don't know they have been healed until they try to do what they couldn't do before they came to you. I've had some people completely shocked when I asked them to do something they couldn't do. And all of a sudden an arm shot up that a person hadn't been able to do that. And they knew that they'd been uh, touched right there. They had felt no sensation, but the movement was restored to their body. So some people are healed without any sensation. So it doesn't mean if they don't feel anything, they can't be healed. It's just a pointer to what God is doing. If symptoms return, advise the person to take authority over them immediately and command them to stop. I prayed for a lady uh, with some migraine headaches, and as soon as that headache tried to come back, she said, no, and stop right now, and the headache was stopped in its tracks. Uh, be, I encourage you uh, to, uh, uh, as much as it's possible, to talk to God because uh, uh, people say, well, what happens if nothing happens? I, it's, it's impossible. When you're talking to God, you're talking to the God of the universe. It's impossible to talk to him and nothing happens. You might not immediately know what has happened, but something has changed in you or something has changed in the person over whom you have spoken words of healing. Uh, some of the dr most dramatic healings I have seen took place within a week or two or even longer after I prayed for a person. Uh, we've had people get out of wheelchairs immediately and we've had people uh, get out of wheelchairs uh, six, uh, three to six months after they were prayed for. Don't give up. Uh, go to someone else for prayer. Never blame the person for whom you're praying for not having enough faith to be healed. Love unconditionally every person that you speak words of healing. I like to say to people, I can't guarantee you'll be healed, but I guarantee you'll feel loved as I minister to you in the power of the Holy Spirit. Now, you might hear a voice saying in your head, I can't do everything that you have just spoken about. I understand. Uh, let me encourage you. All of this happens in just a few seconds. As you keep practicing these steps, you'll reach the point where we're able to move through the guideline without even thinking about it. You know, you can have this guideline with you. People will not be offended. You say, look, I'm just learning. And do you mind if I make sure I cover all of the steps? And step by step, you will be able to pray for people in an extraordinary way. Uh, I do my best to follow these steps over every person who comes to me asking for healing. As you follow these steps, you will discover that more people are healed through your words than you could have ever imagined. And healing brings joy. Anytime somebody I pray for is healed, the person laughs, I laugh, people around us laugh. Uh, God loves to restore joy. Uh, and God is a God of laughter. And when people are healed, laughter is uh, lifted up and spirits are lifted up. Remember the words of Jesus who said, The greatest reason to rejoice when we minister in healing and deliverance is because our names are written in the book of heaven. I trust that your name is written in the book of heaven. If you're not sure that your name is written in the book of heaven, ask Jesus to make you his child right now, forgive you of your sin, and you can join us in this wonderful journey of releasing the power of God and healing into people's lives. Next week, we'll continue studying the life Jesus modeled. Let's pray a few moments and ask God to do more for us as we have heard these words. Father, give us faith to believe that you are willing to heal through us. Maybe you said, you know, I, I'm glad you heard from God saying he's willing to heal through you. But I'm not sure God is willing to heal through me. I'm telling you, God is willing to heal through you. Uh, Jesus already paid for healing on the cross. I call out of you any shame or any reason that you might come up with why God wouldn't want to use you for healing. I break fear. I break shame. I break control. Spirits, all that 
that uh, weaken our ability to release the healing power of God in our lives. You know, you can pray for people who have diseases you have. You can give away more than you have. We've heard many stories of blind people praying for people without sight and they began to see. We've heard stories of people who are deaf and they prayed for deaf whose ears were opened. You don't have to be in perfect health to pray for people to receive a touch from God. You can give away more than you have when Jesus is with you and he is on your side. You can heal the sick. You can do what you never thought you could ever do. I just encourage you today, say a prayer over somebody. Next time somebody comes for you to and ask for help, resist the urge to call somebody else and call your pastor or call a spiritual person or call a lady or call somebody else. You can do it. Uh, just release uh, words of faith. Uh, Jesus already paid for it on the cross. Just give Jesus what he already paid for by speaking words of healing. Just feel like somebody's listening right now and you've got a problem in your right ankle. Your right ankle is just uh, killing you. Uh, the pain is intense. I just speak to your right ankle. Feel the presence of God. Heat coming down upon that ankle right now. That's a token of God's presence. Move your ankle around. Uh, just try to wiggle it around and put a little bit of weight on it just to test it. And you'll see that God has done something for you. What a tremendous thing it is when God begins to work in people's lives. If that's you, write to me and we'll pray more with you and encourage you in your walk with Jesus. Next week, we'll continue studying the life Jesus modeled. We hope this message has filled you with living hope in Jesus. If you would like to talk to someone about your spiritual journey, please leave a comment or send us a private message. We enjoy reading your notes and having an opportunity to pray with you. If you received a blessing through this message, please share it with others. We invite you to become a Living Hope Partner by donating as little as a dollar a month through our QR code. Your gifts will help us create new messages and reach more people. Living Hope is a ministry of Ingleside International Incorporated. All donations for Living Hope qualify as a charitable contribution. Thank you for your prayers and support. Next week, we will continue learning together from the Word of God. God bless you and fill you with living hope.